The Director of Public Prosecutions has said she will personally lead an investigation into the case of a young woman who killed herself when she was prosecuted for making an allegedly false rape claim. 23-year-old Eleanor de Freitas, who had bipolar disorder, committed suicide three days before she was due to stand trial. She reported the allegation of rape to the Metropolitan Police in January last year. A suspect was arrested but later released and the case was closed due to lack of evidence. The man at the centre of the claim then launched his own private prosecution accusing her of lying or perverting the course of justice. The Crown Prosecution Service then took over the case and Mr Freitas killed herself three days before she was due to stand trial. Well, as the Director of Public Prosecutions investigates this case, questions have been raised about how the criminal system handles alleged victims of sexual abuse. Well, joining me to, to discuss just that is Nicola Mann from Women Against Rape and Julian Young, criminal defence solicitor. A very good evening to both of you. A, a tragic case, this, and one that has raised questions about the CPS's decision uh, to prosecute. Uh, how common is it that cases like this are taken up, Julian Young, uh, of perverting the course of justice when it comes to rape allegations? It is, in fact, very rare. There are only maybe 35, 40 per year, if that. Uh, and the, the, the Crown Prosecution Service have a two-stage test. First of all, is there a realistic prospect of conviction, bearing in mind the evidence? And secondly, is it in the public interest that the defendant is prosecuted in the first place? And one of the criteria is if the defendant is suffering from a mental illness, which sadly um, Mr. Friedrichs appears to have been suffering from. Well, yes, and we'll come on to that in just a moment. But Nicola Mann, I'm, I'm curious to get your view as a general rule, whether you believe it's right that if it's believed that some false allegations were made, then that person should be prosecuted. No, we've been campaigning for several years um, to stop the prosecution of women um, for allegedly making false rape allegations because we see time and time again very poor policing and CPS decisions being made. We can't trust the police and the CPS to make the right decisions when it comes to prosecuting women. It also undermines the whole anti-rape movement because with the, report, with the conviction rate for rape still being 6 percent from reporting, women are less likely to come forward if they think that they're going to be arrested and prosecuted themselves, as have many women that we have worked with. And this is another example of the CPS undermining the best policing and reinforcing the worst. Julian Young, do you accept that that's a risk? And given that the conviction rate is so low for rape cases, you don't want to do anything that will deter women from coming well, forward? Obviously, it's in the interest of society that a woman who is going to allege an, a rape allegation, that is investigated properly. And if there is someone who is responsible for it, they are prosecuted. That's entirely proper. It's when a, perhaps a rape allegation, there is insufficient evidence to prosecute, or someone who claims to have been raped withdraws an allegation. That then raises the question which the police tend to look at. And that, that's a sort of a general principle. And that is where the difficulty starts, because of course somebody may withdraw an allegation for a number of different reasons. Fear, pressure from a third party, a feeling they don't want to go ahead in any event, or perhaps the fear of going to court at the end of the day. And I think the Crown Prosecution Service have to be a little more aware of that. And that's ignoring the, the, the question of, of mental illness, which does occur, sadly. Well, yes, and Nicola Mann, in the, this particular case that uh, has been talked about today, um, the woman we know had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Are you confident or how worried are you about protecting women who are seen to be vulnerable in the criminal justice system? Well, research shows that the most vulnerable of women are being let down by the police and the CPS. Research has shown that the most vulnerable women's cases are more likely to be closed. Um, but the more vulnerable a woman is, the more likely she is to be attacked. And the problem that we find is that women are going to the police, vulnerable women, as was the case in Rotherham. Young girls were reporting rape to the police and some police officers were saying that despite the fact that they were underage and therefore vulnerable and unable to consent, they were actually consenting with their abusers so they wouldn't take action against them. And in some cases the girls were arrested themselves for drunken behaviour. This is outrageous. This shouldn't be going on when the majority of rapists that are acquitted... When, when rapists are, are found guilty, they don't feel guilty. They just feel unlucky because they know that the chances of them being prosecuted and convicted are so small. It's a terrifying ordeal for anyone who's not used to the court system to be in court for any reason, but particularly uh, giving evidence against an alleged uh, attacker. How can that process be improved so that it becomes less frightening for victims? We have, <clears throat> we have a system where uh, a 
complainant or witness can give evidence from behind a cover by screens and in fact pre-recorded interviews which are played DVDs which are played to the jury and now there are experiments to see if you can have pre-recorded cross-examination so in fact the witness doesn't actually turn up in a court at all I think although I have my doubts as to whether that's an appropriate way especially the pre-recorded cross-examination is, is an appropriate way of dealing with matters at least it should make a, a vulnerable or, or, or a witness who's feeling vulnerable more confident they won't be facing the person in front of them whom they say is an attacker a rapist or a sexual abuser. But that could be quite difficult because, you know, a woman wants to connect with the jury. You know, a woman that wants to give evidence wants the jury to see her. You know, doing a pre recorded interview or a cross, -examin cross examination, you, you, you know, if you're not in the same room as the jury, it doesn't always work that way. Okay, well, we must leave it there. A very big issue that will be discussed Indeed. a great deal over the next few months. Nicola Mann, Julian Young, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.